will be uplifted and spirit filled. And we thank Dr. Blake for leading us throughout the week. You know, she, it's been so amazing that each day has brought us so, so many blessings and drawn us closer to God. And before we start our program this morning, I am going to ask Sister Lindim Tombeni to unmute herself and invite the Holy Spirit to be with us throughout this session. Sister Lindy, please unmute yourself and lead us in prayer. Sister Lindy, are you there? Yes, I'm sorry, my sister, I couldn't unmute. I'm okay. here. <clears throat> Let's, let's bow our heads in, in prayer. Kind and loving Father, another day, another moment with you, Lord. We're so humble, Lord, by your mercies, for they are new every morning. This morning, Lord, we come before you, not worthy uh, to be before you, but Lord, we thank you, Lord, for your sons. Uh, glad for having made us rush us to come before the throne of grace, Lord. We're so thankful, Lord, for this. Uh, moments that we have uh, with you, Lord. Many have not seen these moments, Lord. Many are perishing without hope. We pray that, Lord, uh, we will uh, spread the gospel and have these moments, Lord, uh, available to many of our friends and families, Lord. This morning, we want to present to you, Lord, our speaker, who has, Lord, uh, nourished us uh, through the, the, the few days of the week, giving us, Lord, uh, hope, giving us, Lord, an understanding of your love, of your grace, and of your mercy. We pray for those, Lord, who will be still be joining. Lord, we pray for our gadgets, for Lord, when we come before you, Lord, when we humble ourselves before you, even the devil, Lord, tries to attack, tries, Lord, to discourage us. But we know that, Lord, greater is he that's in, our, in us than he that is in the world. And we know that, Lord, you are able to be with those who really greatly need this hour to be able to connect, Lord, and stay, stay connected uh, to, to, to the light. Uh, J we thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen. Today, our prayer focus is really for the sick and the bereaved. We know that there are many people who are lying in hospitals. Some of them are in our homes. They would really have loved probably to be with us and praying with us. Let us continue to remember them, even those who have lost their loved ones, you can imagine the gap that has been created and the pain that they're going through. So we will be praying for them today. I have been sharing with you our guest speakers bio throughout the week. Today, I'll be touching on just the last point about her. And this is basically about the verse that really encourages her in life. It's found in Isaiah 41 verse 10. It says, fear not for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Wow. Dr. Blake, this is your time. We are so grateful that you can be with us once again this morning without any connectivity issues. God's children are waiting to hear you speak to us. Thank oh, you. praise God. Praise God. Good morning, everyone. Sister Tabby, I think that's the, 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 the name. I'm trying Absolutely. to learn language. There you go. There you go. Um, so it's just so great to be with you all this morning. You have been a wonderful host. I got to tell you that. Just very um, wonderful and encouraging. And so we appreciate you very much. And for all of you um, who were able to join on, I recognize that there are some challenges in regards to the weather and so on and so forth. And we expect these things, but by the grace of God, we are here together and we are going to carry forward. Uh, this morning session. So I'm so excited again to be with you. Won't you pray with me? Father, we thank you in spite of the challenges that you we are facing, that you have allowed us to still be able to move ahead and to just to spend time together in prayer. Even at this moment, I pray in a very special way, Father, that you would just bless. Speak through me to us, Lord. Give us an understanding of that, which you desire for us to do, and lead us closer to you. Bless your people, I pray, in the name of Jesus. Amen. 
All right, folks, I did promise that I was going to um, do a little something different um, to continue with our prayer focus. And so um, in looking at Luke 11, I shared with you, the disciples um, wanted to, um, to pray like Jesus. They saw Jesus praying and the Bible said they went and they asked Jesus to teach us um, how to pray um, as John taught his disciples. And I recognized from the text that prayer is not something that we just do um, just, just like that. Prayer is learned. Um, it would appear as from the text that prayer uh, is something that we need to teach. Hallelujah, somebody. Um, but Jesus taught them, and we, we know the, um, the Lord's prayer. We are acquainted with the prayer. And after Jesus taught them the Lord's prayer, he went on into um, telling them a parable um, and um, telling them of asking and seeking and knocking. I reminded us last night that indeed prayer has two sides. It's like a coin or a, a dollar of one side side does not exist without the other. Um, the aspect of asking does not exist without the answer in hallelujah. So there is a human and divine side to prayer. The human side is asking and the divine side is granting that which is being asked for. And so often in our prayer lives, we, we missed out on our father's best for our lives. Oftentimes because we have not learned how to ask big, to seek deep, and to knock long. I reminded us last night that, of course, there's sometimes that our prayers will not be heard because they're selfish. James said it. We ask because um, out of our own selfishness. There are other times when we ask, maybe not as God would have us to ask, but in the midst of it, as long as we ask sincerely and our lives are connected with God, there is not a sincere prayer that is uttered by the child of God, that God will not answer. He may not answer it in the way that we want him to, in the time that we want him to, but rest assured that because God is faithful, he's not a man that he would lie, that God will answer the prayers of his people in the way that he sees best for his glory and his people's highest good. Now, one of the things that we notice in regards to Jesus um, when he was on earth is Jesus' prayer life. Jesus had a life that was just laced by prayer. M Mark chapter 1, 35 tells us very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus would get up. He would leave where he was sleeping and went out by himself. And there he prayed. Luke 5, 16 tells us Jesus prayed in the desert in lonely places. Luke 6, 12, he prayed often, sometimes times all night long have mercy Luke 22 44 he prayed with such intensity of focus that at the end of his life he even sweat great drops of blood when he prayed and so we notice that Jesus was constantly in communion with his father often we see prayer uh, um, as just simple asking God for his blessings mm -hmm. uh, most of our prayers are usually about getting something from God God fix this, or God fix that, or God bless me here, or God bless. It's usually about blessings. We mentioned that a little bit last night. It's usually about telling God about our troubles and our trials, making our request known to him, hoping that we would get some blessings from God. Um, if God answers, oh yeah, we are happy. We have faith and God answered us. Uh, mercy, if God does not answer in the way and the time we want him to, we often get frustrated, we get flustered and we tend to fret and give up. We worry. Now, prayer for many of us, many of us, is something we do um, in order to get something from God. For many people, we pray because we want something from God. Tonight, I want to make a suggestion to us. Prayer is more than asking God for things and getting things from God. Prayer is a means of building relationship with God. Amen. Prayer is a way of deepening our commitment with God. I'm repeating what I said last night. Prayer is 
um, a, a way where we connect with God in an intimate relationship, right? It is in prayer and in the answer of prayer to prayer that the exchange of love between father and child takes place. I'm going to say that again. It is in prayer and its answer that the exchange of love between father and child takes place. I read a book and I want to share some things that I read from that book. The book is called Transforming Your Church into a House of Prayer and it's written by Douglas Small. And it talks much about prayer, prayer in church and, you know, so on and so forth. But there's some things that he mentioned. And I want to share um, up some of that with you this, uh, this morning. There are three aspects of prayer, right? So prayer is not just something we do. And I ask you, if I were to ask you, what is prayer? We always have the um, cliche phrases, prayer is talking to God, as to a friend, prayer is so on and so forth. And we have all of that. But what does that really mean? You know? And so he breaks prayer down into three different aspects. Um, and the first aspect of prayer um, is communion. All right, communion. So when we think of communion with God, we often think about talking to God. It's our speech, you know, we talk to God and God talks back to us. So it's about words. Communion for us, it's about words. Um, it's saying something to God. However, may I suggest that communion with God is deeper than just words or language. Communion, according to uh, my dictionary, um, it, it means the sharing or the exchange, uh, the exchanging, sharing or exchanging of intimate thoughts and feelings. That's what my dictionary says. Hmm. Communion is a sharing or exchanging of intimate thoughts and feelings. So therefore, communion is about being closely acquainted or closely familiar with someone. To have an intimate relationship with someone therefore means that this person has to be very special, someone you enjoy being with, you love to be in their company. There is a delight to be in their presence. You just can't wait to be in their presence. There is a sense of freedom to share special thoughts and, and feelings. You look forward to being with the person. There is a special relationship, a special connection. You see, intimacy requires time spent in each other's presence, time exploring and enjoying the gift of companionship and friendship for the sake of knowledge, growth, and mutual enjoyment. You know, when you think of two people who are dating, you know what I'm saying, or, or, or a couple who just got married, hey, you, you think of the fact that they call each other all the time just to hear each other's voices, not because maybe they're trying to get something from the person, but they just want to hear the voice of the person. There's something about the presence of the person, the voice, or just to commune with a person, you know, you know, uh, uh, and so, so they're building a relationship, they're growing together, uh, uh, and basically spending time getting to know each other, delighting in each other's presence is probably the most important part of the relationship. You, you, you can't build a deep, sweet, intimate relationship with someone when you're not spending time with them. Mm -mm. Marriages fall apart in many ways because we do not spend time um, or our couples do not spend time with each other. They do not spend time talking and growing and learning each other. And sometimes you find um, that, that the marriage uh, dissolve or the relationship uh, breaks because of, you know, the intimacy is not there. The delighting in each other's presence is not there. Um, and so, and so uh, um, the, the basic aspect of building an intimate relationship, uh, the most important part possibly is that spending time uh, together, growing in love with each other, delighting in each other's company. And so it is then communion with God is no different, but even more so serious. It, it's more than just words. It's about a relationship. It's about enjoying God's presence. We're talking about prayer, you know, we're talking about prayer, three aspects of prayer. And the first aspect is this um, called, this thing called communion. Communion is about spending time with God just to be with God. 
communion is not so much about wanting something from God as much as it is wanting to be with him. Mm. Mm. You come to God in prayer just because you enjoy his presence. Mm. Communion with God is a central, most important aspect of prayer because it is in this aspect of prayer, this communion aspect that you are delighting in God's presence, that if God does nothing for you, you would still come to him. If he does nothing for you, if he answers no prayer, you would still worship him. You would still love him because why? You have gotten to know him to be a great and awesome and powerful God. A God that loves you in spite of you have spent time enough with him so that you delight in his presence. So even if he does not give you the answer that you're looking for, you will still come. This is the aspect of prayer that most of us are actually missing in our prayer lives. And that is a reason why you do not have uh, more people coming to pray. You know, sometimes our prayer meetings are empty. People don't like to pray. Sometimes it's like you're forcing people to pray, but you can't force people to pray. Prayer can never be forced. A forced prayer is not a prayer at all. Mm. Mm. Communion is the most essential or the central most important aspect of our prayer life. It is the foundation of our relationship or prayer relationship with God. We commune with God because we enjoy his presence. We spend time with him because we have found him to be so sweet and his presence so transforming. We are in love with this person and we just want to be with him. That's what communion is. Amen. The writer of the book says that, we have not prayed until we have prayed ourselves to silence. <laughs> For it is in the silence that we experience the awesomeness of the presence of God and thereby delight in his presence so much that you actually want to stay there. Have you ever been in prayer with God that you just don't have words to say? You just want to stay in his presence. There is no words. Maybe the tears are flowing, but there's something sweet. Hallelujah, somebody. There is just this awesomeness that's just envelope you and you just want to stay on your knees. I've been there where I just did not want to get up from my knees. I just wanted to be in his presence. Hallelujah. Just spending time with God. You, you've prayed yourself to silence because what can you say to this awesome God than just to bask in his presence? Mm. Mm. Wow. We pray ourselves in the silence. It is in the awesomeness of this silence that we experience his presence and thereby we delight in his presence. We just want to stay there. We delight, we delight, we delight to be in the presence of God. You see, it is love to God and love for God actually that motivates this kind of communion. And it is communion with God that actually motivates us to love him. So one does not go without the other. Loving God means spending time with God and spending time with God means growing to love God. So then if there is no delight in our prayer, if we are not excited about God, if we are not happy to be in the presence of God, if somebody has to force us to go to prayer and to pray and to be in prayer meeting, trust me, the prayer is going to be dull, difficult, and boring. Mm -hmm. That's why I mentioned before, so many of us do not have that deep connection with God. Why? Because the delight is missing and the delight is missing because we have not learned to commune with God. Oh. Hear me. John 3, 16 tells us God so loved, right? That he gave. What did God give? God gave us a person this Bible said, for God so loved that he gave us his only begotten son, mm -hmm. right? It is a person who God gave to us. God did not give us a concept, a thought, a thing. He gave us a person. The problem for us is we have minimized this person into someone who simply meets our daily needs. 
So when we get into trouble, we go to this person to do things for us. When the marriage is not working, we go to him to fix the marriage. When the children ain't doing right, we go to him to fix the children. When the finances are not so right, you know what I'm talking about, right? And oftentimes, for many of us, we do not spend much time with God until we are in trouble and we need God to do something. So Jesus, the gift of God has been minimized into what we can get out of the gift. Mm -hmm. Yes. You see, Jesus has become for so many of us, the fixer upper guy. <laughs> he fixes the problem, fix the children, fix the marriage, fix the health, fix the finance. So most of the time when we talk to this person that God gave us, it is to seek something from him rather mm, than to seek him. We are seeking something instead of seeking the person. Mm. It is not really the person that we want. It is mm. what the person can do or give. Mm. You know what I'm saying? That we really, you know, when we come to prayer, you mm. li listen to most of our prayers, always give me, do this, do that, heal the sick and, you know, you know, yeah, mm. yeah, fix the finance and yeah. And mm. that's all good because he wants us to come. The Bible study, his eyes look to and fro the earth to show himself strong on the behalf of those whose hearts are loyal to him. He wants to bless. That's one thing with our God. He wants to bless for it is in blessing his people that his glory is best seen. But oftentimes our prayers are not really about God. It's about mm. us. You know what I'm saying? It's about meeting our needs. Mm. You know, if there was some other way that we could have accessed God's blessings without praying, many of us would not pray at all. Sure. Many of us feel obligated to pray because we think that prayer is the only way to get stuff from God. Can I tell us this morning, our prayer ought to begin with communion. Communion is the desire to be in God's presence, just to be there, wanting nothing, just to spend time with him. The desire to be in his presence must become more important than our needs. While our trials must drive us to Jesus, to drive us to pray, our desire to be with God ought to drive the trials away. So Ooh. our trials drive us to God, but prayer or our communion drives the trials away. That's what it is. Why? Because when we come to God and spend time delighting in the presence of God, we should find that his presence is so sweet that the trials the trials, the troubles that drives us to prayer are actually driven away by his very presence. We are lost in his presence and we are so delighted just to be there that we actually forget the reason we have come. <laughs> and the power of that presence takes care of the trials and the troubles that drive us to prayer in the first place. Yeah. Psalm 1611, you will show me the path of life. In mm. your presence is fullness of joy. And at mm. your right hand are pleasures forevermore. I'm mm. wrapping up because I don't want to take too much time away from our prayer. But let me say this. Communion has nothing to do with asking God for things. This mm. aspect of prayer has nothing to do with asking God for things. Right? But rather everything to do with delighting oneself in God's presence. You see, it is through communion we learn that the, great, the greatest answer to prayer is not so much to leave with the answer to the prayer, but to leave with God himself, who is the answer to prayer. In other words, the person who does not delight in God leaves prayer with just enough grace for the moment, but the person or the one who delights in God leaves the prayer with God himself. That's mm -hmm. according to a quote I got from, uh, I think it's Douglas Small who mentioned that. 
So when there's no delight in prayer, we will get the answer and we leave with the answer. But the mm -hmm. one who delights in God, when you get into prayer, you commune with God, when you leave that prayer moment, you leave with God himself. That mm -hmm. is why, that is why you pray without ceasing. Why? Because as you live with God, you're in prayer and he's there with you. You're constantly communing with him. <laughs> season and seasonally your time is spent with him because you have left with him you did not leave him at the bedside or at the place you knelt down to pray you left with him psalm 37 4 delight thyself in the lord and he shall grant you the desires of your heart communion with god must be the priority of every christian because without communion prayer becomes a duty rather than a delight an activity we do just because we need something or because we feel guilty if we don't pray mercy you see one of the reasons that people find it so difficult to pray is because they do not delight in god there's no enjoyment in his promise in his presence rather when communion with god is not what it should be every Every other aspect of our Christian relationship is in danger. Nothing ought to take the place of communion with God. Communion simply is spending time getting to know him without asking him to fix the problem. But oh. just delighting in his presence, just wanting to be there because you just enjoy his presence. Amen. Father in heaven. There may be somebody on the line this morning who would recognize mm -hmm. that they have been praying, but have never really spent time communing with you, enjoying mm -hmm. your presence. Mm -hmm. I pray that you'll do something for somebody today, that even as we pray, we will begin to understand this aspect of prayer, just getting to know you for who you are, just loving you just because you are God. And even if we never get the answer to that prayer, we will still never stop talking to you, never stop wanting to be in your presence because we desire you more than the blessings. So bless your people. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. God bless you, God bless you. Amen and amen. Thank you, sister. Thank you, Dr. Blake, for reminding us that we need to review how we relate with God. We need to enjoy his presence. And at this point, we're going to be breaking out to our prayer rooms. Let us remember that our focus today is on praying for the sick and the bereaved. So as we share our prayer requests, let us also remember to pray for the sick and the bereaved. So at this point, we are going to be handing over to our sister, Linda, to 